just a minute is so mommy's finishing her final exam. Oh man. You know, during the last cycle my flow was so abnormally heavy. I went to my OBGYN about it. Was it was it like thick like mucus or was it just watery? No, it was thick all the way. It was lots of clots. So how do you so worry? Well I'd be worried too. So what happened at the doctor's office? You know, you have to go in and take a blood and a urine sample and then of course, you have to get up in the stirrups and do a pelvic exam and pap smear. <laughs> Why don't we go someplace a little more private? Oh, that's a good idea. Oh. Weirdo. shaking come on man how are you today all right i suppose <laughs> hey good good bravo like i always say life's too short to be down or a hater crack a smile now before there's no later Which one of these bambinos out there is yours anyway, hombre? Little girl in the pink vest. Your granddaughter's a real looker, dude. Doll, if you ask me. <laughs> I love her locks. Gorgeous color. I'm not a grandfather. Oh no! <laughs> what are you, then, her great uncle or something? <laughs> That's so nice of you to bring her down to the park today, man. Say when you leave, y'all wanna get some ice cream or something? You know what? I'm not a great uncle either. I'm a uh, father. Okay, okay. I mean, no offense or anything, but aren't you a little long in the tooth to be chasing after the kitties? I just have the one and I can keep up with her just fine. Maybe even better than you can keep up with yours. So don't worry about me. Okay, okay. That might be true, Chief. But you know what? I can promise you this. <laughs> you ain't never gonna look this good doing it. I got a membership over at Beach Body Fitness. Oh, I even do Pilates three times a week. Whatever. Well, if you don't mind me asking, Pops, how old are you anyway? Oh, wait a sec, wait a sec. I'm almost a psychic, I'm good at this. You're 58. No, no, no. You're 61. Try 48. So what's your daughter's name? Ella. Ella. That's dope. I call my kid a dope? Whoa. What's wrong with you? No, Chief. Chill out. Take a chill pill. I don't make dope like retard. I mean, dope like beautiful. I'm, I'm trying to say your daughter has an exquisite name. All right then. How old is that little princess anyway? Four. Going on forty. Cool. So you're a professional comedian now? <laughs> hey, you better lay off on them eye jinx. I might barf up my breakfast burrito all over you, huh? Huh? I'll try. <laughs> Hey, that's an amazing coincidence. My boy's four also. Wow. Which one is he? <laughs> hey, 
handsome devil over there with his finger halfway up his nose. Mind the boy picking his nose, but he better pick a winner, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, okay, okay, I know it. that's a pretty nasty habit, but after all, he is just a boy. I mean, he could have his finger up the other end, right? <laughs> I suppose so. Dylan, what, what did I tell you about peeing on everything? Quit. Anyway, his name's Dylan. D-I-L-L-O-N. Like America's number one finest actor, Matt Dylan. That's how I came up with his name. Did you know that? Oh boy, I've seen outsiders rumble fish like a gazillion times. Anyway, I'm an actor. <laughs> I'm a damn good actor at that. <laughs> Been in anything I might have seen. As a matter of fact, I recently did a local TV commercial for that Peter the Pit Noir book. Oh yeah? He's that nut job attorney that does those silly commercials where he says if you've been in a car wreck, I'll get you every bone you deserve. Exactly and he growls at the camera like a rabbit dog. That'd be the dude, dude. <laughs> in his latest commercial. Oh, I played a client with a neck brace and arm cast. I gave a testimonial. <laughs> Well, time to get Ella. See you around. Nice meeting you. Yeah, it's all a conversation. Right. Same here. Hey, you know, me and Dylan used to come down here two or three times a week. I mean, we could just meet up again. To the fat motto and motto. Right. I gotta go. Bye. Hey, I didn't even catch your name, brother. All right, I'll see you on the flip side. What you got there, Ellen? Treasure. That's treasure. Can I keep it, Daddy, please? It's part of a broken toy. We'll, we'll throw it in the garbage. No, it's mine. I found it. Okay, okay. Don't get upset. We'll take it home, we'll wash it, and you can keep it for a while, okay? Keep it forever, Daddy. Forever's a long time. But I want to keep it forever, Daddy. Okay, so don't. You can keep the treasure forever. The treasure's mine forever. That's right, baby girl. It's yours forever. projections when I have been in meetings all week and I have another one scheduled for tomorrow. Kid's a jackass. Yeah, it seems everybody at the office knows that except for him. 
Isn't that the way it always is? Just don't go reminding him at this year's Christmas party. Fetch it. So what's for dinner? Uh, nothing special, just spaghetti and salad. Oh, uh, I'm so hungry. That sounds like a five-star gourmet meal. Well, that is a good thing, because as close as I come to a gourmet cook is Chef Boyardee. <laughs> so what did you two do today? Um, let's see, we read some books, watched Dora the Explorer for the millionth time, and went to the park. Did you have fun today, Ella? I saw the highest on the swing today. The highest? Wow. Not too high, I hope. No 360s. Oh, alright. Just checking. You know, I met a weird guy today. He was, I don't know, he just kind of... No, so, Ella, don't throw your spaghetti on the floor. Do you know how hard it is to get tomato sauce stains out of carpet? Uh, intimately. <laughs> you know, I hate it when she throws her food. It's like she does it just to make a new mess for me to deal with. As if I don't already have enough to do around here. Francie, I will clean it after dinner, okay? Can you do it now? Once the stain sets in, it'll never come out. Spot removers sure. in the kitchen sink. Sure. So what were you starting to say? Oh, never mind. No more messes, little lady. You're four years old and you know better. From now on, you keep your food on your plate where it belongs. Understand? Affirmative, Mommy. Affirmative? When did you learn that word? This is time to get me on special. Minus five, two, I'm hungry. Zero. The test has been terminated. Missile is prime. Trajectory unspecified. What's wrong? Minus three. Two. You look upset. What's the, what's the deal here? Yeah. That's some bad news today. That's all good, baby. Just allow these titanium alloy digits a pleasure to get rid of all your problems. Oh, it is not gonna work this time, Julian. We got serious problems to affect the three of us. Okay, then what's so terrible? Lay it on Big Daddy, you know I'm here, I got your back. Father's company isn't doing well, sales are down. So what, sweet mate? You've been saying that for about a year or something. I mean, you know it's gonna pick up. Yeah, but not this time, Julian. We've posted significant losses for the last seven quarters. Blah, blah, blah. So what, babe, and? <laughs> Father's company is going to have to file for bankruptcy. The attorneys say that we're going to have to dissolve the company and all of the assets are going to have to be used to pay back the creditors. Big whoop de doo come on. Why are you getting your head all in a fuzz about it? I mean, tell you what, think about something nice. Tomorrow night, me and you and the little guy, we'll go over to Red Lobster. You can order up whatever you want. I know you'd be loving the butter biscuits, babe. No, not this time, Julian. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Not exactly, Olivia. <sighs> My father's company going bankrupt means we have no income. Everything is tied to the company, the house, the cars, everything. We're not gonna have a place to live and we're not gonna have any transportation. What are we going to do then? 
I tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna blow this pop stand and shoot out to LA, baby. Jump start that acting crew we've been talking about. Oh, I don't know what you mean. I need to view this situation as an opportunity, babe, not a tragedy. It was written in the stars long ago. Let's just sit back and let the night sky guide us to our destiny. You do it? Oh, Julian, you get your head out of the stars and serious trouble here on Earth. Come on, Lizzie. Chill out. I got everything under control, babe. Okay, so what are we gonna do when we get to LA? We have no money and we have no transportation. How are we gonna support ourselves? No fear, babe. We'll just dip into our savings, that's all. We don't have any savings, Julian. Oh, we don't? No, we have four maxed out credit cards and about $600 in the checking account. Well, no worries then. We'll just have to rely on our most valuable asset, my money maker. No, you don't. It's cool. I'll just go back to dancing at night. We'll have all the moolah we need to get to LA in just a few months. No, we agreed when we got married, you were not going to dance anymore. <laughs> that was your idea, babe, not mine. Yeah, but you agreed to it. I would never have married you otherwise, and you know it. Hey, it'll just be till we got that bread to get to LA. Come on. It's all right. Listen carefully, Julian. I will not have you out until all hours of the night dancing on stage in a little red thong in front of hordes of horny women while your son and I stay here and wait for you to get home. And that's that. A sexy man's gotta do what a sexy man's gotta do, babe. You know, looking this good is both a curse and a blessing. I mean, I have to bear for all my earthly days. Oh, you are a husband and a father now. You will not dance again. That is final. It is non-negotiable. Fine, babe. I'll find another way to get us the bread. I love you, baby. Thank you. You need some sugar, sugar. Treasure. What new treasure, darling? Ella found this at the park today. You let her keep that disgusting thing, Ned? It belongs in the trash, not in her bedroom. I wanted to throw it away, but she got upset, so... You can't throw it away. It's my treasure. When we got home, I washed it with antibacterial soap, so at least it's clean. Can I sleep with it? Please, please, please. Well, since Daddy already washed it, I guess you can sleep with it, just for tonight. Mommy, I want to keep it forever. Daddy, can I please keep it forever? Please, please, please. Mommy said no, honey. Why do you always make me out to be the bad guy? We're supposed to parent as a united front. What are you talking about? Don't always put the blame on me. When you tell Ellen no, you're supposed to present it to her as a joint decision from us. But I didn't say no. You did. I was just telling her what you said. Oh, so you don't agree with me then? You think we should just let her keep that disgusting thing she found on the playground for the rest of her life? Is that it? No, but... Well, I was just... I'm tired of you always playing the good cop and making me out to be the bad cop. We have to convey every decision to Ella as a joint decision from the both of us. <laughs> All right then, Frenzy. Ella, Daddy says no too. Okay, you can sleep with it tonight, but tomorrow it's gonna go in the garbage. All right? Thank you, Ned. That wasn't so hard. No. All right. Now off to bed with you, dear. Good night. I'm going to bed myself. You coming? In a minute. Daddy? Yeah? Thank you for letting me sleep in my treasure. You're welcome. Why can't I sleep with it forever? Because it's garbage. And Mommy and Daddy said no. But remember, 
mommy said no first. Sleepy time. Shit first. I think your face has come familiar. Well, I got an idea for that. Maybe next time I'll wear a mask or something. Peace out. I'm here the pit bull arbuckle. If you've been hurt in a serious car wreck, call me. I'll bite and I'll tear and I'll rip and get every cent you deserve. I was T-boned at an intersection by a commercial van full of freaking illegals. Bam! Just like that, my life was shattered and I couldn't go back to work. My bills is piling up faster than elephant dung during feed time at the local zoo. But then I found Peter the pit bull arbuckle. The pit bull immediately settled my case out of court with them stingy insurance companies for $237,208.37. I put in me in a living size swimming pool. I'm not ever going back to work. Thanks, pit bull. This happened to you? Call me, Peter the pit bull arbuckle at 1555 got bite. That's 1555 got bite. What's up, brother from another mother? We thought we'd catch you here today, man. Hey. You're fat. Thanks. Don't be telling that man he's fat. Hey, sure he ain't prime stud condition like your old man, but most guys his age, you know, they got a little, a little bit around the waist. Now you tell that guy you're sorry. So you slabby. Always forgiven. You run play, big guy, but hey, I'm keeping an eagle eye on you, all right? What's up, man? What are you staring at, bro? Nothing. Anyway, you never even told me your handle. Handle? Your name, man. What's your name, dude? Ned Wazinski. Yeah. I'm Julian York. Oh. Now we're officially acquainted. Why are you doing that? My hands are clean. No offense, Julian, but I sanitize after every handshake. <laughs> Why? Shaking hands is a leading mode of germ transmission. 
You're afraid of getting my cooties. That's hilarious. <laughs> Back in the day when I used to fly solo, oh boy. I shook more than hands on a few ladies I just met. Feel me? Not on your life. Not on my life what? I don't want to feel any part of you. I'm not into that. Oh my God. That's not what I even said, Ned. What I'm trying to tell Look, you is- Let's get this straight between the two of us right now, Julian. If you're into that sort of thing, I don't care. That's your business. As for me, I'm straight as an arrow and married, all right? So don't get any more funny ideas, understood? It's just a saying. I didn't ask you to actually touch me. You know what I'm saying? Just as long as we're straight. That's my point. I'm straight. It's no difference to me either oh, way. Oh, God, you're hilarious. You're cutting me up like an egg or something. Glad I entertained you. <laughs> oh, so what you used to do anyway for you to kind of stay at home dad? Don't call me that. Don't call you what? A stay at home dad? That's it. Don't call me that. I don't like it. But ain't you, aren't you your kid's only, ain't you the one that takes care of your kid full time? Yes. Well then you're a stay at home dad just like me. We're homes. It's all cool. Maybe you're a stay at home dad, but I'm sure as hell not. Well, what are you, Ned? Ella's primary caretaker. Caretaker? Is it that the same thing? Absolutely not. Stay at home dad has a negative connotation. It makes you sound like you're a lazy, good-for-nothing, unemployed bum who lays on the couch all day in his boxer shorts watching Maury find out which low life father which baby <laughs> while his kid eats delivery pizza off the floor. Wow. I guess I never really thought well, about it like that. you should have. Primary caretaker sounds like you have a legitimate purpose. You're doing something important. I kind of dig that. From now on, I'm not a stay-at-home dad either. I'm Dylan's primary caretaker. Check that out. Impressive. So what did you used to do before you were her primary caretaker? Vending machine mechanic. What the hell is that? I repair machines at the French retail products. You know, candy and soda. Some now you can use DVDs. <laughs> like those condom and lubricant machines they have at the nightclub bathrooms. <laughs> Never worked on one of those, but you got the gist of it. Make any good moolah doing that. To support myself since I was 20. So why don't you give a sweet geek like that up? It sort of gave me up. What do you mean, dude? My immediate supervisor accused me of stealing. What could you have stolen? Money from the Coca-Cola machine. He even claimed I took some cans of soda, too. Did you, bro? Nope. Never took a single thing on the job. Not even expired product. They just axed you like that? I bet you quit. Guess you could say a little of both. Yeah, I know, but hey, man, I'm gonna call you back in about 30, 40 minutes, man. Do me a favor. Don't fall in love and get married in that amount of time. <laughs> and put your wallet in your front pocket, bro. <laughs> All right. Hey, man, I gotta do this boss thing. All right. I'm on this. Peace. That's my man right there. <laughs> What's wrong? <sighs> Ned, Ned, Ned. Have a seat. A unit you serviced last Tuesday is missing cash and product. Which unit? 219B at Winock and Oak. It's a soda machine, right? Yep, that's the one. So tell me, Ned, what happened? Nothing. I replaced the blown capacitor and then left. Hmm. Well, 
Since you were the last tech to service the unit, I have to hold you responsible for the theft. Uh, wait a minute. I didn't take anything. I didn't even touch the cache storage module and the product I removed to access the capacitor. I replaced right before I locked up the unit. Well, that's what you say, Ned. But bottom line is, money and product are missing from a unit you serviced. So we have to hold you responsible for the theft. Kenny, wait, you're making a mistake. As of right now, you're suspended without pay until further notice. Suspended? I didn't take a damn thing. When I started working here 14 years ago, you weren't even old enough to get into an R-rated movie. <laughs> so you can't... <laughs> Wait a minute. We're not going to Oak. That unit's not even in my territory. That's in Craig's. The only reason I serviced it that day is because he left early and you had me cover for him. Remember? Yes. So what? So, Craig just happens to be your brother-in-law, that's what. You hired the guy yourself two months ago. So what the fuck you trying to say, Ned? What I'm trying to say is that you and your scumbag brother-in-law, Craig, probably stole from that machine and a bunch of others. Set me up to be the fall guy. That's what I'm trying to say, you crooked little twerp. Like I said, you're suspended without pay until you hear otherwise. You got that? Now get your tired old ass the fuck out my office before I put you out. Netta. Netta? Why you call you that, dude? Netta is my legal first name. Sounds like a girl's name. It is. I was named after my great grandmother from Poland. You got a chick's name? Ned and Ned and Ned. That's enough. <laughs> Just call me Ned. Got it? I'll never call you by your girly name again. Your secret is safe with me. <laughs> Don't you worry, my man. Good. So what happened next? Ned? Well, what are you waiting for? Go to your locker, get your shit, and get the fuck out. Right now! Sure. I don't even wash my own dishes at home. What else did you do? Sign holder. You got paid to be a human signpost? That's seriously funny, bro. Yep. <laughs> really are some suck-ass jobs. Did you finally find something in your field? Nope. By then, Francine and I found out we were going to be parents, and because she had a thriving career as an actuary, she thought it best that I'd be Ella's primary caretaker. Uh-uh. So here I am. If it hadn't went down like that, we'd have never become friends, Holmes. You got that right. What'd you do before caring for Dylan? I was a feature performer with the world-renowned Hardwood Dancers. You a male stripper? Hey, man. I was billed as an exotic dancer. That's actually a highly paid and skilled career. <laughs> so, 
You were a moody dancer. Hey, man. But that explains an awful lot. Let me tell you. If you only knew how many hours a week I went to the gym, practice in front of the mirror. Every move was choreographed. I bet. <laughs> Your wife know about this? That's how I met my wife. Are you serious? I'm serious. It's colon cancer. <laughs> Olivia used to be one of my biggest tippers. How big? Never less than a 20. Even slipped me an occasional C note down in my... picture man Olivia's got eight years on me that makes me her young hot stud muffin I think I may puke what about you and your old lady with a four-year-old you must have a few years on her yeah I've got 11 years on her I knew it no way a chick your age popping out chitlins to run around knock it off <laughs> You make it sound like I'm ready to collect social security or something. My bad, Big Ned. I want to utter another word about your advanced age. Pink swear. Good. So she got you doing housework and everything around the house like a housewife? Yep, pretty much all of it. Cooking and cleaning and everything. Yep. Somebody's got to do it. I see he works 40 hours a week plus overtime. I'm too tired to do anything when she gets home. How about you? No way, dude. <laughs> Besides taking care of my big man Dylan, I don't do anything around the house. If I got some spare time, I'm gonna use it to hone in on my craft as a performing artist. So, who does all the housework? Olivia? Hell no. She's a big shot at her daddy's corporation. Man, she's vice president. She's got a corner office, a secretary, and a personal assistant. Comes to the housework, we got us a little Hot Latina chick comes around about twice a week, you know what I mean? Oh, and cooking, well, I just order in, pick up. I've never turned the stove on once since I moved in. <laughs> to each his own, I guess. So what's the dealio with them lollipops, Holmes? Dealio? The dealio, what's the deal, man? What are you, in the fifth grade? Don't be a hater. You're as mad because I got my finger on the throbbing pulse of pop culture, baby. <laughs> it's not my fault way back in the day when you were my age. The only thing you could do with rap had to do something with Christmas presents. <laughs> Touche. So, what's the dealio with the lollipops? Well, when I quit smoking, I started substituting dum dums for luckies. How long have you been off the tobacco? Six years. And you're still sucking on them things, Chico? That's kind of funny. I'll tell you what's funny. Since I've been here, I've noticed a slew of people come and going from that unmarked retail space across the street. Uh, why am I supposed to find this funny then? There's no sign or anything identifying what the place is. You know what it is? I never even noticed it. To tell you the truth, Ned, before you said something right now, just probably some workers finishing out the place before they open it up. I doubt it. None of them are dressed like construction workers. They're not carrying any tools or anything. I've never seen the same car twice. Well, I mean, I guess that's kind of odd, though, my man. Do me a favor, Ned. Please don't get into it with Dad today, okay? That's gonna be up the floor. Please, Ned. Whatever you say, dear. Oh, give her about some sugar. Mm. Hey, Ben. Good boy, I like your face. 
Come on, Ella. We're going to go in the kitchen and help Grandma with dinner, okay? I don't want to go. We can visit with Grandpa later. Come on. Grandma. Ned, why don't you make yourself comfortable here in the den with Dad? We'll call you when dinner's ready, all right? Right. I'm not there, Ned. Irma needs to sit there for her back. Irma just left. But she'll be back. So I found another place to sit. Gotcha. So, how's life treating you, Ned? Fine. How about you? Everything's good, except for a few persistent health problems. I could complain, but why bother? Everybody's got problems, right? Right. Hey, Ned, take a gander at these babies. At what, your legs? No, my brain spanking new tube socks. You like them? They're nice, I guess. These are the best damn tube socks I've bought in years. Reinforced toe, heel, hidden seams, thick 80-20 cotton polyester blend. I like those cheap, thin socks you get from those third world countries. These here babies are made in the good old U.S. of A. Cost a bit more, but they're worth it. Got them done at the men's market. You want a pair? No, that's all right. Come on, Ned. Don't worry about the cost. My treat. Got to go back there tomorrow and get some more for myself anyway. What do you wear, an 11, 12? I'm okay on footwear for now, Floyd. Thanks. All right, suit yourself. But I guarantee once these quality tube socks are gone, you won't be able to find them again. But if you don't want them, you don't want them. As America, man's free to do what he wants to do or not do in this great land. Even if it is a mistake. You know, that's why I got my ass dropped on that island of Grenada some 30 odd years ago. So a man such as yourself would have the freedom to make his own choices. Thank you for doing that, Floyd. <sighs> Grandma, dinner ready yet? What? Dinner ready. I did 10 more minutes, Grandpa. That's what she said just before you got here. This right, the damn roast will be ready for tomorrow's breakfast. Damn dog. God, I'm literally starving over here. My gut's completely empty. I had bad diarrhea last night and I haven't eaten a thing since. I knew I shouldn't have had that pistachio ice cream after dinner. I was out of my lactose intolerance pills. I'm sorry to hear that. Eh, it's nothing. I could complain, but what's the point? I'll live. Oh, and don't worry about using the can. Irma scrubbed it real good this morning on her hands and knees with Clorox bleach. Damn Clorox will kill anything. Hell, I could wipe out that damn HIV with enough Clorox bleach. Give me an endless supply and I can just wipe it out of existence. That's good to know. Tell me, Ned, why do you always have one of those little Kojak pops in your mouth? Didn't you quit smoking years ago? Yep. Well, I gotta tell you, candy's for kids, not for grown men. You need to kick that silly habit. Besides, it'll raise your blood sugar and rot your teeth. You don't want that at your age. Nope. Grandma, dinner ready? Dinner is it ready? What? What'd you say, dear? Nothing. So, Ned, when are you gonna quit playing at home with the kid all day and go get a job so my daughter doesn't have to support you? You know, I don't play all day. You know, Ned, back in my day, if a man stayed home and played with the kid all day while his wife went out and supported the family, they'd call him all sorts of names. Gurney man, sissy. Pansy, pussy. Excuse me, boy. I'm gonna go check on the ladies. You do that, man. Asshole. Prick. Daddy's here! Hey, what you got there? Okay, Allison. 
we need your spirits to be high, okay? Because really, you are under the impression that everything has gone fine with the routine appendectomy. Everything's fine. I'm going to be okay. Got it. Okay. Now, Julian, um, you're the surgeon. And just hours earlier, you performed the surgery and discovered and removed a tumor. So now the BOPS results are back, and they are showing positive for an aggressive form of cancer. You need to be the bearer of bad news to Allison, okay? You need to let her know she's going to have to go through a battery of tests to see if the cancer is spread throughout her body. And keep in mind, Julian, that if she does have that, she is terminally ill. Got it? You know it, Teach. Okay, so from both of you, what I need is for you to um, move and live and let's breathe the character. Let's just not say the lines, okay? Let's live them. Okay, here we go from the top. Ready? Okay. Three, two, one. Action. Oh, hello, Dr. Patel. Hey, girl. Lydia, Julian's off script. I'm just personalizing the lines a little bit. Chill out. Oh, please, Julian, you never stick to the script. Okay, Allison, what Julian did was just slightly tailor his dialogue so it would fit his personality. In essence, I mean, he has become one with his character. That's exactly what we're looking for, Julian. Nice work. Thank you. Allison, you just need to focus. Let's emote, okay? Let's take it from the top again. Here we go. Three, two, one. Action. Oh, hello, Dr. Patel. Beth, how are you today? Better. Not the anesthesia wore off. That's great to hear. If you have a moment, there's something I would like to speak with you about, though. Sure, doctor. What about? Is something wrong? Well, during the procedure today, I found a tumor. So I took the liberty to remove it. A tumor? Oh my god. Is it serious? Well, I went ahead and sent it off to the lab to figure out whether it's malignant or benign, and the results came back already. I'm afraid to find out, Dr. Patel. My mother died from cancer. If you're not ready to hear, Beth, I mean, I can come back. It's okay. Now's as good a time as any. I'm ready to hear the results, Dr. Patel. Beth. Yes, Doctor? You're screwed! Lydia, this is way off script! No surgeon in the world would talk like that! Girl, please! What's up, man? What'd it be? Hey. You got a penis. Last time I checked. Don't be asking that man about his junk. Why? <laughs> you just run and go play, dude. See you later, Gator. What's up? Mystery store over across the street's been pretty busy today. Well, how long have you been here, though? About an hour. We've got 19 people going in and coming in and out of the store. 19? Most of them had some sort of bag or something with them. A few of them had suitcases. That's like Jerry Springer mud wrestling midget crazy stuff. It's just some type of business, like a church or a, a place for lots of social gatherings. Yeah, I thought about that, but almost everyone leaves within a few minutes. That's too short of a time period for any kind of social gathering. I got an idea. Instead of sitting here on the bench with our thumbs in our butts, why don't we grab the kids, muscle over there, Find out for ourselves. No thanks. Why not, bro? I don't want anybody over there knowing that we're snooping around. That's how you end up missing for a few days until some dumpster diving bomb at a Chinese food restaurant finds your decayed corpse. Besides, uh, there's something funny going on over there. No one's gonna let us in on it. In the woods. It's probably nothing. We should just forget about it. Let's grab the kids. Go over there to check it out. We'll just peek in. Maybe ask a question or two before we scram. I don't know. Dude, don't worry about it. 
It's broad daylight. The kids are with us. What are they going to do? Mow us down? Don't pussy out on me. All right. Let's do it. Let's be discreet, all right? I'm on the down low. What? Down low. QT. Stealth mode, baby. Whatever. Just don't draw anything to attention to us, that's all. Hey, from here on out, we're gonna be like ghosts. You know, like that retard on the play Miracle Worker? I got this, cuz. Hey, you, yo! What be this place here? Do you speak sign language? <laughs> well, I mean, no, but... And what was all that you were doing? <laughs> well, I mean, I you mean, know what? I... Never mind. We were just wondering about this place. There wasn't any signs outside, so we just thought we'd stop in and ask. We well, thought wrong. Now get out of here. She don't come out our bad, right? We're just wondering what this place is. I mean, is this like a store or something? Are you affiliated with any law enforcement agencies? No, not at all. Well, I mean, actually, I used to stay up all night watching my device. I mean, does that count? One time I saw this great episode by that Bruce Willis I mean, actually, it was kind of boring, but... You know what I mean? For sure. Who I sent mean... you here? Give me a name. No one. It, it, it's nothing like that. I'm just curious about this place. That's all. We well, knew a curiosity to the cat, right? The cat. I, I, what what did Curry ask you to do to the cat? I mean, I want to tell you about his life. I just throw it. She had a cat. She's hot. What's up, bro? What a waste. Are you done? I'll never be done, Ned. I'm like a wild jungle cat. <laughs> With an instinct for hot milfs. That's a milf. <laughs> Mom, I'd like to fuck. All right, all right. Okay, now listen up. I had this kid at the library last night look up on the internet the address of that store over there. Where'd you find that? Well, nothing. He checked the county property records, tax database, even that goggles thing. You name it. Goggles? Come on, Ned. It's not goggles. What's so damn funny? <laughs> It's not goggles, it's Google. Google.com. It's a website. Whatever. Man. Have you ever surfed the web? Nope. <laughs> you don't own a computer? Not me. Francine has one she uses for work. Even my grandpa owns a computer, Ned. <laughs> I know all he does is sit around all day looking at hot Asian chicks. <laughs> Considering he's your grandfather, I'm not surprised. <sighs> It's like that store over there just doesn't exist. Officially. But I know somebody I can call. Check that out for us. You mean like a, like a criminal? I mean, how do we even go about doing this? You know, back in the day, Ned, when I used to shake all my goodness, <laughs> one of my regular customers what was her name, Nikki. Her husband was a local mob boss. His wife involved in this. Nikki's cool, hombre. I'm not gonna say your name, man. Besides, she only know you by my stage name. <laughs> oh, man. As long as you don't use any names at all, I suppose it's alright. I'm gonna text her right now. <clears throat> so. Rick's Rough Rider. <laughs> I'm sorry I asked. Man, you're so not gonna believe 
this. Uh, Nikki, the mob boss's wife, she just got back to me a while ago. About the place across the street, man. Yeah, she said the place across the street. She said the store is an organized crime front, a, a money laundering front. I'm freaking serious, man. She said they do stolen money, stolen checks, everything. That explains all the bags and envelopes everyone over there is carrying around. Exact mundo, baby. Those bags and envelopes are full of bread, full of money. Cheese, cheddar, dinero, Benjamins, baby. Right here in broad daylight across the street. That's amazing. I'm telling you. Not for long, though. She said not for long. Why is that? Man, she said those guys move around a lot. They stay in front of the bus, you know. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, so what now? What do you mean? Freaking what's our next move, man? Nothing. I mean, we found out what it is. Nothing. That's it. There's, I mean, what else is there to do? Are you kidding me? I'm knock off the joint. <laughs> Who are you now, James Cagney? Who the hell is James Cagney? <laughs> You're an actor, and you don't know who James Cagney is? Uh, no, who is that? Your male masseuse? Never mind. You're serious about robbing this place? Robbing? No, Ned. We're not going to rob anybody, man. We're going to go in there in the middle of the night when nobody's around. Dick. Very funny, Julian. Hardy, har, har. Joke's over. I'm not freaking joking, man. I'm as serious as stomach cancer. Listen, there is a fortune in that place across the street, man. It's just waiting for us to mosey over there at Nick. Burglary is a crime, Julian. If we did this, we could end up sharing a five by nine cell with guys who craft shanks out of mattress springs for a hobby. It's only if we get busted. We're not gonna get busted, man. We're gonna do it at nighttime, like I said, you dig?
say, cuz? I don't know, Jerome. My entire life, I've worked for everything that I've got. I'm no thief. And I'm not a freaking thief either. But listen, those guys across the street, man, they're like the biggest crooks around here. They stole from crooks. It's all crooked. Think about it, think about it. All we're really doing is doing the community a service. <laughs> we're basically taking the booty from some modern day pirates. Stealing, even from criminals, is cruel. So, what happens if, if, if somehow, by some chance, we get caught? We're not okay. getting caught. But well, what if we do? Just suppose that we get arrested. Hell, I don't what, know. Well, I, I don't do. Know. I do. Our kids lose their fathers. Our wives lose their husbands. That's not gonna happen. Are you willing to take that chance? Hell yes, man. chips in order to win the pal. I'm sorry, Julian, but I just can't. Don't, just, don't make your decision today, okay? Don't worry about it. Think about it, ponder over for a couple days. And if you don't want to, we're cool. We're still cool. All right. Crash is... Besides, I already know you can make the right choice. Man, this is the Julian. chance of a lifetime. Okay. Not bad. Well, I gotta uh, pick up some groceries, so I guess I'll see you tomorrow. Man, I need some groceries so bad at the house. I am absolutely sick of eating Doritos every morning for breakfast. God. I thought your uh, hot Latina did all the grocery shopping. We had to cut her loose, Ned. Kind of getting short on cash. Well, I, I guess you could come to the grocery store with us if you want. Cool beans. Let's go, man. I'm not pushing you in the cart. Besides, I brought this home for mommy with the me. But I want it, Daddy. Come back. Can I get this, dude? Why not, man? Yeah. What? That one back. For what? It's bad. What are you talking about? This thing looks perfect. It's May first. It was in the front. So what? It's only in the front because they want you to take it. Come on, man. Who be they? Store management. And why would they want to do that? It's the freshness rule. What rule? The freshness rule. Look, if you're gonna be doing your own shopping from now on, Julian, you need to listen up. Retailers rotate the old product to the front so the unsuspecting consumers, like yourself, will grab it. Fresher stuff is stocked in the back. Come on, why would they do that? So they can get rid of the older stuff before it expires. Get it? I guess so, man. Now grab a fresher one from the back. Check the date. May 10th. And the other one was May 1st, remember? Hey, you're right. You know what, Ned? You be the boss. I try. Come on, Ned. Why didn't you grab that bag of peas? You know that's what you just said you needed. It's the last one. 
Come on, man. What is it now? Lay it on me. You never take the last one. Why? Because it's been handled by a lot of people. Come on, Dad. You just put it in the microwave. Bottom line is, nobody else wanted it, so I don't. That's cool. Dude, you got some serious issues, man. Jeffrey Dobbins. Ned, you think you can mull any faster? Ned! Earth Ned! Julian, check this out. <laughs> that hot mama in the white pants. <laughs> over there at the jungle gym. You mean that gang of tings over there, man? Bingo. Looks to me like they're kind of scaring the kids. Bums all natural kosher sausages available now at fine grocery stores everywhere in both mild and dry base spicy. Tired of being fat, bloated, and lazy? Now you no longer have to be with the all-new revolutionary Humpinator X3000. Hump.
Um, hump of pounds of grotesque body fat using the patent pending Humpinator X3000. That's right. No more beer gut, fat ass, muffin top, or thunder thighs. Perfect for both men and women of all sizes and ages, the Humpinator X3000. Yeah! Julian, it's Ned. Sorry to call so late. That's all right, man. What's up? I'm just doing some personal hygiene. I'm in. No shit, are you serious? <laughs> Baby, that's what's up. <laughs> well, as you would say, I'm serious as stomach Oh, cancer. man, man. You're so not going to regret this, man. We're going to be big time rich, baby. <laughs> Better not. I'll see you tomorrow. Hey, wait a second, man. Hey, wait a second. Uh, uh, hey, man, now that we're partners, uh, I mean, you mind me asking, you mind me asking a personal question? Shoot. Hey, man, uh... Does my ass look big to you? Good night, Julian. No, I didn't. Mean Hold on, I'm serious. I'm serious. Uh, I mean, check it out. Come on, man. Let me know. I mean, does, does my butt look flabby or anything, man? Goodbye, Julian. But Ned, hold on. Ned, hold on. gonna get in that store across the street. I need to go over there and take a look around and figure out the best point of entry. We're talking about casing the joint. Exactly. Man, we better hit that place quick before they pack up the tank. How quick? I think it's Saturday night. Saturday? That'd be the one. That's not like a free day. So what? It's not like this joint is Fort Knox or something. They can skip town at any time. And once they are gone, our window of opportunity is shut forever. Go over there tonight and take a look around. You need me to ride shotgun? Not necessary, but you're more than welcome to. Got big plans for tonight. Now that we're gonna be rich, I taking the family out to Red Lobster in a movie. Wait a minute. You already have plans for tonight? What if I said I need your help? <laughs> I would have said good luck going at all. <laughs> That's what I thought. Casing the joint last night. I don't know what I need. Yeah. Go, Ned. It's birthday. Go, Ned. Woo! Huh? So, how do you figure we entered the joint? Front or back door? Front. Back door doesn't have a key to entry. So, how are we gonna get in the front door? Well, I notated the manufacturer of the lock so I can make a bump key to open it. What's the bump key? The bump key is a skeleton key that you force into the lock's keyway so that you can force the tumbler's pins into a sheer line. That way, the cylinder can be rotated. Does it work, Dad? Yep. Groovy. So how do you know so much about locks, anyway? As a kid, I like to experiment with locks and all sorts of other... Devices. That's how I became interested in becoming a vending machine mechanic. As a matter of fact, back in high school, my nickname was Keys. Why did they call you that? Never mind. Huh? So once we're in the store, how are we going to crack the safe? You're going to pick that bad boy open too? I can't pick a safe. That's out of my league. I'm going to cut it open with an oxyacetylene torch. Where are we gonna get an oxy? Where are we gonna get some of the gear like that? Vending parts supply company downtown. Man, my man, you were all that and a jumbo bag of salt and chips. <laughs> you say so. Hey, dude, don't we need to get some sort of gear for the heist? Like maybe some tools and shit? I suppose so. When the kids are done playing, why don't we go shop for what we need? 
We'll go to Cheapo Mart. They'll have everything there. It's gonna be a ton of fun, my man. Bet. He shoots. He scores. Hey man, you see my game winning shot or what? the rope for? In case you have to climb something, dude. There's nothing to climb. Hey, you never know. All right. But from here on out, just some necessities. All right? Ah, Captain. Big hammer for Conan. Sledgehammer. You might need it to access the safe. Oh, yeah? Well, everybody's swinging this bad boy in there. It's going to be huge. <laughs> I'm not getting all this way. Of course not. What size are you, Julian? I'm large. You know I got room to flex my massive muscles in that shirt. <laughs> Why? Well, since the job's at night, I'm buying each of us a black outfit. Oh, uh, man, don't buy me nothing. Why not? Man, I'll go to the mall later. I'll get something from Worthington's or something. Worthington's is going to cost ten times as much, and when this job's over, we got to throw these clothes away. All right, I'll make an exception. But just this once, Ned, okay? And only if you promise not to tell anybody that I wore threads for cheaper mark. Capiche? See? All right. Yo, I got my 40. I like to drink. Hey, can you, like give me a sip, man. No, what, man? Chill out, little homie. Just give me a sip, man. Just give me a sip. Hey, I'm a man. I can't, brother. I'm a man. Yo, mama will get pissed off at me. My mom don't care. Yo, I grew up with that bitch. She's crazy. No, she's not. Come on. Just, just give me a sip, man. She ain't got a trip. She ain't. Why oh, you gotta be a little bit? Hey, man. Come on. Man. No problem, dude. Nice. Chill out. Hey, uh, yo, punk girl, get your ass on here. Punk girl on the cell phone, get over here. What? What's, what's up? Hey, 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 what's up? What's up, man? What's up? Hey, hey old man, what's up? Hey, 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 Oh, what are we looking at? Hey, 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 come on. Hey, come on. We're calling 911. Is there something? Hey, are you doing? Hey, y'all, we're talking about this. What are we looking at? What are we looking at? Hurry up, hurry up. Where's your horses? Would you? All right, all right. But 
If we run into some trouble tonight, let piss down be right here. Careful you don't shoot your pecker off. Oh, oh uh, <laughs> you're right, man, you're right. <laughs> Think you can crack that bad boy open? It looks like we don't have to. What are you talking about? It's already open. Ah, oh, damn, man! It's it. What? Are you serious? Dude, I already picked out the color scheme and the racist stripes on my Camaro SS and everything! What are... At least we ain't got a drag in the blowtorch. Great. Yeah, what are we gonna do now? Search the place. Maybe they kept the cash somewhere else. Good idea. Hey, I gotta go drain the pipe first. Hurry it up in there. Get it. Girlfriend, don't you up no. Sorry I made your mama. I don't work. But we both know she's a hot.
mind if I park it here, man? Suit yourself. <laughs> Can I bring out any other hand sanitizer today? Nah, I'm immune to your germs. You crack me up, cuz. Well, I tried. You know, we done packed up everything. It's been shipped to LA. And now Olivia and Dylan are waiting on me to get back to the crib. I guess this is it for you. Yeah, once we get settled in out there, you gotta come out. And the two of us will have a blast in our life. We'll see. I mean, I'll now I have this business to run. And besides, you'll be busy in no time at all with all the acting jobs you're bound to get. I guess so. $200. $200 laying on me, man. No, no, no. $200. We said $100. What? Oh, $100. I can't even get that broke. What? Yeah, those two dopes walked into the store about a month ago with some kids. Let me tell you something, Alonso. Your narrow ass already on the line here. You better be damn fucking sure about this. Oh. Oh, yo, man, I'm damn sure my narrow ass is sure about this. All right, then I'm going to hit it. Go get them bitches.